And uh, I think I kind of start off from where he left off in a way, a little bit. Uh, so I talk about privacy micro relations. So before that, doing that, I'll just, uh, just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dias Lonapin. I'm from a startup called Trace2.io. We are a decentralized KYC application. Uh, it's kind of odd that I'm talking about privacy micro relations here, but maybe uh, you'll come to see my point of view. Uh, so just maybe I'll just kind of try to gauge where we are. So have you guys heard of the term monkey rocket? If, if, you, if you feel like the government is uh, trying to infiltrate the blockchain network, you guys must have definitely heard monkey rocket. Have you, any of you guys heard monkey rocket? OK, uh, check it out later. <laughs> So I'll talk about privacy micro violation, right? What is, uh, pri what, what, what do we mean by privacy micro violation? Uh, a privacy micro violation is when we actually give our data, like private data, to an enterprise for in exchange for reduced cost of a service. So we give, you know, without without knowing it, we might give, we will be giving our data on different, uh, different platforms, small amounts of data, tiny minuscules of it, uh, every, every time we browse the web. And organizations and enterprises use this data uh, to collate, to you know, analyze, to so uh, co correlate statistically, and <coughs> re-engineer how you think, so, and make you buy the things that they think you need to buy, right? So I, I, I don't know when you guys like, you know, for example, go on Facebook and see the ads. Is, are you actually browsing Facebook or is Facebook browsing you? Or is Facebook using you, right? So uh, this is kind of like a gist of what a privacy micro violation looks like. Uh, I just hope that some, everybody kind of got an idea. Uh, yeah, so I just would start by defining, like, this is just like me defining some levels of uh, privacy. For most of us, that we think that, like, okay, the green there is like your local info, you know, info that you consented for. A large amount of information, which is like your location, your social information, who your friends are, what's your browsing behavior, is in this big yellow bar, right? And what we actually consider private is normally your, uh, you know, our financial information, you know, our national IDs, our private keys, our login credentials. Now, we don't really pay much attention to this big yellow. In, our, in, in most of us, we have kind of uh, basically, like the previous speaker said, we become hyper for like reduced cost of a service for you know this this amazing UX experience or whatever it is, right? So that's that's where we are today. We we don't really we don't really pay attention to what amounts of data that we actually leak in small amounts. We only we only really, really care about, uh, I don't know, uh, does there, anybody else have a point of view? Do, do you guys really worry about uh, your browse online? I mean, just, just kind of gauging uh, the audience, like, do you guys, uh, you know, do you guys use VPN? Do you guys use Tor? Do you guys uh, uh, really care about all this? Uh, how, how many of you guys use VPN? Uh, how many use VPN and Tor? Okay, so maybe I'm speaking to the wrong audience here. <laughs> I'm preaching to the wrong audience, but uh, I'll just, Anyway, talk about it. So, uh, well, that's good, yeah. But uh, we still, even if we use these services, right, we still leak information. Uh, especially one, one major area that we leak information is when ads on using targeted ads, for example, yeah. So, we lose a lot of privacy when we actually even see an ad. So, like, how many of you guys use, like, the Brave browser? Okay. Okay, that's great to know. <laughs> uh, okay, so so this this is just basically where I'm going, right? So we we normally don't care so much. A lo lot of us normally don't care so much about this information, um, and I'm just trying to s say why this is important and why you know we need to take care of it. This information, which is in red, we already know that centralized uh, forms of uh, you know keeping this in a secure place is not working out, right? Because, you know, even the NSA cannot keep their data safe, right? So, yeah. So, why, why, why is this important? Like, I mean, I get that a lot of us here might be considering privacy important, but 
so as we formed a new company, and as, I, as I'm going around trying to get people on board, a lot of youngsters and a lot of people I see, they don't really care about privacy. For them, it's, it's, it's all about like, you know, the user experience and how, you know, how the application benefits them. And they don't really bother so much about privacy. Privacy is not something very core to their values. I, I guess a lot of people coming from a different generation may be having different thoughts about it, but I just thought, thought that this would be a good opportunity to tell why, I mean, you know, come back to thinking why is privacy important. So I, I'm not going into the, you know, the area where like maybe the NSA has a lot of data on you, they have a false positive, they might send a drone to whatever uh, new key out of the world, right? But I'm talking about realistic things that might actually happen, right? So uh, why is privacy important? Privacy is important because an adversary there has more information about you than you know yourself, right? So for example, let's take the case of, uh, the, I just call this uh, entity or this avatar Lucy, right? So she, she basically writes data into the web, right? The adversary can read this or observes this data, but Lucy never has any idea that what info has been accessed. There's no record of it, there's no audit of it. There's, like at the end of the day, uh, the adversary knows more about this particular person than any of us know. Like, you know, we have no idea how much information we have already leaked into the world. We have no idea who's collecting it, who's analyzing it, who's doing what with it. We just, you know, as the day goes by, we just browse the web and, uh, you know, like give, lose our privacy a little by little, right? So we need to be more conscious about this. And why is this important? Because there are a lot of issues that this leads to, right? So, so you know, I mean, these are just some generic examples, right? Like uh, real examples of how data can be used. Like, you know, you have phishing, you have social engineering. These are like actual real world issues like scams, uh, synthetic identities and extortion. So uh, I'll just maybe talk a little bit about some of this. So for example, synthetic identities. What is a synthetic identity? Synthetic identities are created, uh, like what happens with synthetic identities is that an adversary takes in information like, you know, uh, like it's not one particular information. It takes in, they take in multiple uh, parts of your information and create an identity. So for example, they could take your, you know, your national ID, your name uh, and somebody else's name. They kind of form a social profile, profile of you. If, uh, if any of you guys use Multigo, you guys would know how that works. So, uh, you know, your database, date of birth from another friend of yours, maybe. They take all this information and create an identity, and they they actually take like years to do this, right? Like five or six years to actually create this synthetic identity. Then they use this synthetic identity to form, create transactions and create leave a transaction trail so that uh, they can do financial actions with it, which can cause you financial harm. So you, it might lead to financial loss, you know, uh, 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 you being tracked for illicit activity and so on and so forth. So I'm just trying to say that the actual impact is very real. There's no, like, it's not an imaginary impact of you losing your privacy, right? Or you losing, you giving away your personal information is actually a problem. It is not some fake imaginary crypto uh, thing that, we think about it's actually there is actual impact if if you lose your privacy if the the recent i think uh, in this in the recent embargo by donald trump he for example uh, like says that i i think i, I read it today that uh, you know the the us government for example can use various means to actually uh, get you to release your uh, release a company's information about you so more and more we see governments and other organizations trying to go the other way around uh, of getting you know trying to say that you know if if you have nothing to hide i mean like if you have if you're not done anything bad you have nothing to hide which is actually not true i mean the issue here is information asymmetry there are some people who know more about you than you know what you have leaked into the world which actually causes concern, right? Which actually causes these kind of issues. Uh, another example is this. I mean, uh, this is kind of famous now and I don't think I have to talk a lot about it. Uh, 
you guys all recognize it, or do you want me to say? Uh, can can you just maybe <laughs> raise your hands? Okay, okay. Maybe for those who don't know, right? I just uh, kind of talk about it. So basically, uh, uh, like this is a social engineering act. So you know, it's very real. Enterprises are actually social engineering you to make you think and do the way they, they want you to do. And I'm not here to say that maybe that's wrong, maybe that's right. That's up for you to decide. I'm just here to let you know that this is actually happening. And if you care about it, then you should be looking at your privacy and trying to be more privacy preserving. Yeah? So it's up to you. It's not, it's, it, you know, I'm, not, I'm not here to make a judgment call whether this is like a politically correct thing to do or not. Or maybe it's an economically correct thing to do or not. Uh, I'm just saying that this is very real. So in this case, for example, what happened is that uh, like Cambridge Analytica is kind of like mining your information to kind of uh, like kind of socially engineer you to uh, maybe social en uh, to engineer elections and they're kind of selling this platform to countries across the globe and not only in the US right so uh, this kind of coming to light and there's a lot of talk about it but this is just like one of the aspects of how that engineer data can be used and how we don't really care about like, okay, when we browse, uh, if we set all the settings and if we use VPN and we still go to Facebook, for example, what are we losing, you know, this kind of stuff. So, and I agree that the decentralized applications are not there yet where we can actually use it in a fluid manner, but I hope to, and uh, I hope that we get there soon. Uh, okay, I have this small theory of how this came to be. Uh, I think, Earlier on, like you know, like in the 90s and stuff, we used to like get CDs and from magazines and uh, install software. We used to keep the ones that are open source and freeware, right? And I think when we moved on to the 2000s, we kind of started thinking that whatever's free on the internet might actually. I mean, I'm just, I'm just. This is a hypothesis, right? So we just started thinking that whatever's free on the internet is good, you know, because we had this conception, miscon I mean, conception from before, and then. Whenever there's a service that's free, we kind of start using it without actually thinking about the actual implications be, be, behind it. Which is, and the actual implication is that we're actually paying for this service. It's just that we don't know how we are paying for it. We are paying for it in terms of our privacy, in terms of giving, of, uh, giving up how we think and allowing an enterprise to make you think in their terms, right? So, yeah, like, you know, now like Google's a verb, right? So, and that's the source of truth, so. Yeah, so I come up, come up with some suggestions. So I would say that we should try to use open source applications that has a focus on privacy. Try and avoid being the product uh, as much as possible. Uh, use decentralized applications to earn and to be part of the network. So if, if for those of you who don't know, like for example, the Brave browser, right? You can use a Brave browser, you can use a uh, there's this, okay, I'm not promoting any token or anything like that, but I'm just giving, I'm just throwing ideas to the community to think about how we might, you know, we can transform, right? So there's this, there's this token called Basic Attention Token, which is part of the Brave browser, which actually pays you for actually giving attention, your attention to the, you know, to the platform. So, you know, I mean, why not? Why, why do we want to pay uh, another ad network or Google or whatever for, you know, uh, reverse engineering our brain, right? Why don't we use something that's open source? Why don't we use something that actually pays you, what, you know, instead of a centralized authority? So I think that once we have more usage of such applications, there'll be less information asymmetry and uh, better data protection and more transparency. Yeah. Finally, I just, again, I think this is a very uh, strong community, but I just asked how, much of you, how many of you guys think that Bitcoin is anonymous? Or, you know, okay, that's good to know that nobody thinks about it that way. Uh, but a lot of people do, and uh, yeah, the thing is, it's not. And one of, one, of the, one of the places where it's not is because we, again, leak information to KYC platforms uh, or in exchanges. Like, for example, you go to an exchange, you put up your KYC details there, right? And that's actually a place where you actually lose some of your privacy. Now you guys would think, okay, I'm coming from a KYC decentralized platform and I'm talking against KYC. So what, what I'm trying to say is that we should find a balance between complete privacy and 
uh, talking with government and regulators because we still live in a social world and there is a social fabric and you know social norms are important but it does not mean that we have to lose a large extent of our privacy in doing so so if we want to make bitcoin more anonymous we still need to we one thing that we need to do for example is uh not give uh you know a a lot of our information on these kind of uh platforms right now just to kind of talk about our own platform we actually do a lot to pres preserve privacy on our own platform while still maintain while still trying to uh give you uh, you know give access to regulators in case there's an issue so the 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 thing is that we need to find a balance in that particular scenario yeah so i hope i've kind of made it clear why why you know privacy is still important and what privacy micro violations are and i hope that some of us will be more conscious when we browse the web and maybe use some other you know start thinking differently about uh how we think about the world wide web and uh yeah so i just kind of ended quickly because i can see this gentleman sleeping there so oh <laughs> so 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 <laughs> sorry no 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 you're sleeping from the beginning so i think he's been there for a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyway so you guys have any questions or ah yes not thank you thank you guys